All right. We're live. Ish. All right. <laughs> you guys ready? Yep. In three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, October 4th. That's why that's weird saying October. Oct- Friday, October 4th. You have found the Pinwheels and Ivy podcast, and we are still playoff list, but we're the show must go on. I'm your host, Matt Zawoski. They call me Zoe. With me, as always, Mr. Aldo Soto. Cubs and Brewers tied for uh, playoff wins this year, so that's good. Ooh, that's a good one. You've been waiting on that. You've been sitting on that one. And Mr. Kevin Fiddler, what's up, K-Fids? How we doing, fellas? It's this weird, dark time where we're not watching playoff baseball for the first time in half a decade. It's strange, like walking out of your house and forgetting that you're not wearing any pants. Like climbing the rope in gym class. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we do have a good show because there is stuff still happening. Uh, we live in a 24-7 news cycle, man. Sports never sleep. Uh, Joe Madden, he's gone. We're going to play Rapid Fire Replacement. Ooh, I just made up a name. I like that segment. Rapid Fire Replacement. Uh, the mysterious timing of a White Sox recent fire. And then we're basically going to just touch on a bunch of other stuff. You know you love it when it gets weird like that. Uh, so with all that being said... All that being said, <laughs> let's tap this keg. Sounds like I already did. Let's tap this keg. <laughs> this show is brought to you by Sports Mockery, sportsmockery.com. Make sure you're downloading the app and putting on push notifications so you'll know all the breaking Chicago sports news. As it happens, We got they have complete uh, White Sox and Cub, great Blackhawks writing, Bears writing, cover them all. Make sure you're downloading sportsmockery.com's app. All right, so first and foremost, I got this week's random number for the guessing game. The number is 50. But... 50? For baseball? No, it's not baseball related. I threw a curveball at you. At 50, that's how old Gwen Stefani turned today. Oh, God. That is messing me up, dude. That is messing me up. That's so bananas. B a n a n a s. Uh, if you didn't learn how, the proper way to spell bananas from that song, I don't know. Dude, when you teach at Bonanza High School and that song came out, <laughs> oh. <laughs> was, was KB singing it in the that song? B o n a n z a. Oh God, what can Brown do for you? Oh I'm my just goodness! How is she she's she's performing here. Like, she performs here in Vegas. Like, she's got a regular show. Now it's Christina Aguilera took her place, I think, now. Tonight, Christina Aguilera has her show. She's, like, what, 40? We're old. I don't know. Gwen Stefani being 50 is really effing me up big time over here. (laughs) And literally, as we were waiting for you, Kevin, is when I saw it. And I was like, well, that's going in the show. Um, (laughs) Because I am in shock right now. All right. So we're going to do a new segment that I just made up five minutes ago called replacement what did i call it rapid Rap- fire. rapid replacement rapid, fire. Yeah. rapid replacement so joe madden had a bottle of wine with theo and they decided it'd be best to part ways sounds like a bad wes anderson movie but anyways um there are a lot of names floating out around out there on who could possibly be his replacement so i put together eight names and some of them are very far-fetched, but there are been links to them. So I didn't just make this up. I'm not that creative. So I'm going to say a name, and then you two just give your reaction to it, and we're just going to keep this moving now. All right? Pretty simple. First one that I've seen, Carlos Beltran. Fine. Fine? <laughs> I mean, there's a, it's a guy that Fine. knows the game. He's a good outfielder. There's always a good defensive outfielder as well so you're gonna have a focus on defense and he's probably good with some of the more you know the more latino players as well i think he'll connect but he's also not completely you know he's he's not completely outfielderish. like he's actually a very knowledgeable offensive guy he's not just a defensive kind of guy he's and he's for guys like ian happ i think he'd be a godsend because a switch hitter i think that could be a very big development point for ian happ respect i think i think the keywords that we've like here with like some of the uh Guys who like don't have the coaching experiences, like well, they're they're respected, uh, like inside the baseball community. For Beltran, I think he interviewed for the Yankees job when uh, 
when Aaron Boone got it. Yeah. And then he, or not think he's with the Yankees, like, so. All right. Uh, yep. He's All fine. Right. I don't the, the next one should be interesting. And this is legit. I've seen it. Like I said, I'm, I did not make these up. Mark DeRosa. Hard pass. Uh, yeah, hard pass. It's a TV okay. personality right now that I think they're play, playing on the, the, the nostalgia of the Cubs. That one would be like, that's like Ryan Sandberg minus like 50 at that point. Like, I mean, DeRosa is a great personality on TV. Leave him on TV. Uh, no offense to him. He was great. He, he was, wasn't he a good quarterback to it? North, North, was it Northwestern? Again, no, we keep, it was, uh, no, was it uh, Villanova or something? Villanova. Nova. Was he from Chicago? No. Does he have some sort of like con- connection with the community? I'm going crazy. Maybe not. Never mind. Well, so I feel uh, like at one point, him and Samarja were on the same team together, and that was like the best quarterback and wide receiver tandem in town, despite the Bears. Well, hold on. We will fact check that. But let's, the next name, Sam Fold. What the? F- sure. If okay, I'm gonna say this. At, well, I'll, I'll say this again at the end. As long as these guys like line up with what the front office has to do, sure. Okay. Uh, I, I have no clue what Sam Fold's been doing. I'm an idiot. Okay. But I uh, sure. Okay. Uh, no connection, but no connection. By the way, no connection. I'm thinking of somebody else. Sorry. Mark Rosa played quarterback at the University of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Penn. 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 He's wicked quarterback. Smart. Yeah. But he's not from Chicago now. Wicked sm- He's got a smoking shot wife. Anyways, uh, the next one now is the more popular, what people think is the front runner, Joe Girardi. No. Hard no. pass. Hard pass. Like triple Really? Hard pass. Not, like, not, not like, like, like I'd be pissed, actually. You know, you know, you know who he's the front runner for. He's the front runner for all the Chicago media that went to Northwestern. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> if Coach Artie went to like the University of Indiana or Indiana U- University, whatever it is, like he'd be like, oh yeah, maybe. But just because he went to Northwestern, everyone's like, hey, Joe Girardi, hey, nice. Cubs fans think that they had a hard time with how Joe Madden handles the bullpen. Wait until you see how Girardi handles a pen. And again, the stuff I've heard that go on in that locker room with Joe Girardi, Joe Girardi won in spite of himself a great deal. Um, he wasn't well, again, I just can tell you just from people, I guess I could just put it people that played on that school, played it for Girardi in New York. They, they don't speak super highly of him as a, as a coach. He was kind of a dick. And that's, I don't think the Cubs need to go so hard on the dick. It needs to be kind of a little bit. But still a little bit relatable to the millennials. That sounded really awkward, didn't it? It did. Yes, please. <laughs> it did. Please. Although sure. you have to clip that part of the video. <laughs> the Cubs Son eat a of little a bitch. The Cubs eat a little dick, but not too much. <laughs> hey. Hello. Cubs don't need to go so hard on the dick. You need to stop going with these flaccid choices. <laughs> Cubs just tip, not the whole thing. Um, the other thing, Joe, Joe Girardi. Joe Girardi won NL Manager of the Year. Uh, with the Marlins in 2006, and he got fired because he kept uh, fighting with uh, the GM. He spent like 10 years with the Yankees, and he didn't technically get fired. It was the same thing with Madden. Like his contract just expired, and they didn't want him back, even though the team was one win away from going to the World Series. And why didn't they? Why didn't they bring him back? He wasn't uh, communicating well with the front office, and he lost the clubhouse. The- the Cubs don't want that, so nope. hard pass. And you know, not, not even a bad, like, I'm thankful for Joe. He was great as a Cub, a lot of great history. You know, as a local guy, you know, the speech that he gave when, when Daryl Kyle passed was one of my, the most heart-touching moments I've ever seen in baseball. I can remember that day vividly, but uh, just no thanks. Like, great, thank you, but no thanks. Joe, Joe Girardi? You know, Joe Girardi is perfect for the Mets. Go to the Mets. Yep. Be a hard-ass in New York. He know, he's, been through, he's been through the whole media in New York. Go do that again. That sounds so. So I, I just find it funny that like Mark DeRosa got like a meh, but Joe Girardi got instant hard passes from. No, no, no. DeRosa's yeah. kind of crazy. He's a little Mark bit crazy. Is, uh, He's a little screw Mark loose. Is, like laugh me laughing. It's like that. No. It's never. Gonna, I got you. Well, this next one, I saw this name and I thought this was pretty funny, but again, I didn't make this shit up. Tommy Hatavi. Tommy Hatavi, the pitching coach. Yep. Again, like, I don't. I don't think he's gonna. He well, the Cubs already announced three guys that they're gonna interview from their own team. I won't spoil it since they're probably on the list. Mm. But Hadavi wasn't one of them, and it's fine. He's still young. Last year was his first year being the pitching coach. <laughs> it's gonna be his he, last year. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. he, he was handpicked. He, 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 was, 
he, I mean, he, he's not going to be. He's All like right, I'm old. sorry, but that bullpen was such dog shit that, sorry, no offense. New coach is going to come in, and I'm sorry. He's going to, he's, I have a hard time believing that unless they bring in someone that's like green and two as a, as a manager, they're going to want their own guys. They're not going to, right. They're going to be brought in because they're going to bring in certain people as well. You're not bringing. You don't just hire one manager. You hire his entourage. You, you get. Thing, I don't think the Cubs are going to hire like a a guy who's going to bring in his own staff. That's interesting. I mean, but they do have their Who knows? But who knows? What do you guys think about Mark Loretta? Sure. Again, I mean, that's kind of. It wouldn't move the needle either way. Yeah. Okay. And then I. Have By the to... way, another Northwestern guy, but nobody, yeah. nobody set up for Portland Mark Loretta. I'm going to. I'd be remiss. If I didn't, so I have to do it. Oh, you just hurt you so bad. David Ross. You need okay. to show us the doll. Here's the, thing. Here's the thing, though. Joe Girardi is in the front runner. David Ross is yeah. the front runner. <laughs> I got to imagine Heyman, that, right? John Heyman. Well, John Heyman said on Wednesday, he's like, it's David Ross's job if he wants it. Yep. Well, Unless Bob uh, Nightingale says it is already a done deal. Well, what about your hot Twitter tip? Well, yeah, and you forgot Twitter one name, too, by the way, Zoe, that I'm really interested in. I'll, we'll, I'll well, the, the last one I have is Will Venable. Mm-mm. Will Venable, mm-hmm. okay, that's the that, – so you, you brought up Loretta, Ross, and Venable. Those are the three guys that the Cubs confirmed. They're candidates. Okay. And then we can talk about it and, like, other guys that we might think could be possible kind well, of those, those Those were my eight that I thought were interesting. So Right. And here's the hot tip I got earlier on Thursday, fresh off the Twitter – feed here because I was making I was making fun of people who uh, are like really obsessed with bringing Joe Girardi and again with like all these all the other names there's only been three guys that there's like a direct the Cubs are going to interview them and that's David Ross Will Venable and Mark Loretta Mark Loretta and then Theo Epstein said that there's one other coach who's on a who's currently on a playoff team that they're interested in so but he hasn't said because he's obviously not uh, part of the Cubs, he hadn't, he didn't name that person, but people think it's the Astros uh, bench coach, Espada. Joe Espada. Yeah, mm-hmm. but hot tip from at at Meatball B A W L, hilarious. What well, um, Meatball? Meatball. Uh, I work with somebody who has direct ties to Girardi. It's all but certain he will be the next manager, unless front office gets wowed by someone else. Expect <laughs> Joe. You- the other interviews are just due diligence. So, so you heard it here meat first. Meatball. Meatball with the hot tip. It's not just a clever name. He's not even bringing. I mean, you, God, it's just. Horrible. It's not no, going to be. It's not going to be Joe Girardi. But no. But here's the is... name that neither of you guys brought up, though, and this is the one that I'm really infatuated with, and, and it sounds completely off the wall because this was a team. Now, when Theo said that there was a team, a coach that's in the postseason, that included Oakland, and that includes Ryan Christensen, who I think is maybe the hottest young coaching prospect in baseball. Ooh, the like guy has played – he's coached five seasons in the farm system for the A's, which is 100% about development. That's a money ball system if you've ever built one. He's never lost. He's, he's Hell, he's been to two championships back-to-back 2015-2016, which is hard to do in, 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 the, in the bushes anyway because you're constantly getting an influx of players. And he was even the manager in the Futures game in 2017. He's got a 391 and 307 record in five seasons as a coach. He connects with younger guys because he's still a little bit younger, but he's more of like he's more like a Matt Nagy, more like you know th- like those type of kind of managers. He's a younger guy, but he isn't com- he, he connects and I, he's look at the A's. I mean that team. I'm sorry, that team overachieved, and I have to believe that with Christensen on the bench, that's one of the main reasons he was kind of the Davy Martinez for Bob Melvin. Okay, yeah, I'm looking. I didn't. I don't know much about Christensen. 45 years old, from California. Played for the A's, Diamondbacks, Brewers, Rangers, and Marlins. But he's earned his stripes. He wouldn't be like a bell train where you're just like, here's your first gig. It's managing the fucking Chicago Cubs. This guy, he started in single A, worked his way up to double A, then triple A, and now he's on the show. Like, he's he's paid his dues. I actually, I'm, I'm a big fan of this move. Think about it this way, too. He's literally only coached in a system that is based on the analytics. And so if Theo wants an analytics guy, he's going to get a manager that has to do it. He's only no, I mean, you're talking about Billy Bean here. You're talking about the right. money ball godfather. And so to do this, that's a guy that I think it's, it's a steal, to be honest. This is crazy enough it, where it might work. 
Here's the only qu- obviously like these interviews. There's like a lot that goes into them, and the you have to, like media like thing. right, right, right. I just want one question or not like one like scenario played out. I want Theo Epstein, Jed Hoyer, whoever else is involved for the Cubs, to every single manager or every single candidate that they interview. I want them to put out the entire Cubs roster, no names, just everyone's numbers, and I want them to be like, who would you bet lead off? Mm. Based off these numbers. Ooh. And as long as they don't pick Albert Elmore Jr. <laughs> for, like, <laughs> for like a third of the season, he like moves up right to the top. That, that's <laughs> like It's crazy. Uh, well, we were talking about this uh, before we started to record. The Cubs had the six most home runs in Major League Baseball this year in, 2018, in 2019. And yes, out of the top eight teams, they were the only, or top eight with most home runs, they were the only ones to not make the playoffs. And yes, Kevin, as you pointed out, that's because they also gave up a lot of home runs, specifically in the bullpen, <laughs> specifically in high leverage situations, which led to a lot of blown saves. But the other reason that the Cubs just, the offense was just so bad, they still haven't found a leadoff hitter. They finally went to Anthony Rizzo, like the last a week and a half of the season and I was like way too late but like they just had so many guys and like yeah like they went to Hayward when he was like hot and then he just like died batting lead off for like five weeks Elmora for like a third of the year they tried Schwarber there for like a month and a half all these guys just like failed it's like you guys had other options and like that's like really like I mean Joanne's did great and we'll get into Joanne a little later too that was just like the biggest criticism it was like you could have found like anybody else to bat lead off Right. And you pick like the worst possible options. So well, did, just no. Did it feel weird though that we're like talking about the Cubs as a terrible offensive team when they actually were like in the top eleven scoring and all of that? No, baseball? they were just terrible. No, they were just inconsistent. Inconsistent. Yeah. That's more. Yeah, terribly inconsistent. They're would be terribly better. just like just like 2018. It's so, that. Yeah. It's that. It's that lift again. It's it's the launch angle stuff. It's the swing. Of, it's a home run or nothing. No, well, it, it was. It was. They hit all these home runs. But as you said, remember when we were talking about everyone was hit good pitching about these mm. Ryan RBIs? Mm-hmm. Because no one was getting on base. Mm-hmm. That's why. So you have all these yep. solo home runs. Yeah. And it's like, hey, that's great. That You want home runs, but it'd be nice to have somebody on base. I'd love to see the numbers of how many solo home runs the Cubs hit this year. Because Schwarber hit a ton of solos, too. Even mm-hmm. when he was leading off, he hit a ton. Like, Chris hit a ton. I, I mean, there's that right there alone. You put two or three guys in front of well, him. And, well, think you about can't live by the long ball all the time because you're going to go to the postseason and right. you're going to face a, a, you know, a freaking Scherzer. You're going to face, well, they did, you know, he got hit around a little bit the other day, but you're going to face a Kershaw. Hopefully it's postseason Kershaw, but you're going to face good pitching. You can't live by the home run all the time. Now, the Boston, right. Boston was fantastic. They just move over. They were just killing it. But you really, know when you get down to it, is? you need to manufacture. You know what the biggest example is? Think about August and now think about how hot Cassianos was. Mm-hmm. He was hit, he was hitting second. No one was getting on base in front of him. Yep. Nobody. And he, he had like what fifteen home runs in his two months, and he was batting second most of the time. Mm-hmm. Nobody was getting on. And that proved everything about with Chris too, because because Chris was hitting the two hole before that as well, and there was nobody on in front of him, or rarely. And so like it was almost like a unicorn when there's a guy in second in front of him. Cassianos went out there and he raked for in the two hole, and it still didn't drive in a ton of runs. Right. There was just there was just the cupboard was bare. It, it, that was the ultimate dead zone. You know, between that and the bullpen this year, those are the only two things that I look at and say the Cubs were horrible at. I think that the same roster this year, you know, next year you get a leadoff guy and you get a better bullpen. I think that that team wins the division. That's why I, you know maybe just a new voice. That with Joe going, it happens. You know, the so new just, voice, new era, new group. You know, so you what? find someone else that can connect and just motivate in a different way. Love Joe. I'm sad to see Joe go. Like I know, although I feel like, the guy should have a statue built. He really should. And, and for me, I even said it when the Cubs won the World Series. This guy should be able to retire a Cub coat a manager whenever he fucking feels like it. But Chicago is turning into Boston a little bit, and we're not happy with just one title. Now it's, we need we, – why didn't we win three? Well, because winning a World Series is freaking hard. And the Dodgers are also in existence. Like, it's not that easy. Now, they didn't make the postseason this year. It didn't matter at all. But teams get better. Teams approach. They, they change. You're the top dog. They're going to adapt their rosters to beat you. And in the process, they create a roster that happens to be a winning roster by evolving from what you do well. They do it. They figure out a way to do it better. And I think the Cardinals did that this year. And hell, the Cardinals won a playoff game now. I mean, that, that, I think the Braves are about to be a very big, big postseason disappointment. That's a huge way to get game one. Oof. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, 
I just but, want that one scenario played out. And I not, do want to point not out pick Elmore. that the tip that Aldo got was Joe Girardi, unless they go with someone else. So <laughs> thank you True. again, Meatball, Meatball, Meatball. for that hot, hot, hot tip. tip. Yeah, hot. that's that's the kind of stuff that we get DM'd quite frequently. So that's you guys get. Stuff. I get these weird um, click here. I'm a Nigerian prince. Um, <laughs> And then I get the other ones to say, click here. Click here to see my nude pictures online. Um, (laughs) I I, I deleted that guy years ago. So (laughs) we also had a very weird firing. So the White Sox had an AL batting champ. They had a guy who was arguably the hottest hitter in September. So he finished third in the batting, uh, batting race. We had Jose Abreu win the RBI crown. The White Sox as a team had the eighth best batting average in all of Major League Baseball, not just the AL. Yeah, I know, that OPS. <laughs> nope, it's not the OPS. The OPS is the, the 24th. It's what Rick Hahn, it's what Rick Hahn said. Mm-hmm. What it, it's well, the on-base percentage. Yes. It's the no walks. Hold on, I'm trying to find them in the OBP. Yeah, 23rd. In the league in OBP. So They're dead last in walks. The White Sox have fired their batting <laughs> coach. So thought that they was were a less weird. patient with him than they than the Sox were in the box this but, year. But I mean they were last place in walks by a lot. The next worst team was the Tigers, and the Tigers had twenty more walks than them. Poof. <laughs> Three hundred and seventy eight walks. They were thirteenth in home runs. And they were 11th in non-base percentage in the American League. Yes. So when can't be Steve, doing that when everyone's hitting home runs and you have to walk. Right. Especially in that home run hitting friendly park that the That's White right. Sox play in. So Stevens got the boot. Uh, I haven't really seen any names tied to rumors. Uh, White Sox hitting coach rumors aren't exactly the hottest <laughs> coaching rumors in the city right now. Um, Frank. Thomas. No, he wouldn't. I don't AJ think no. Percy. He's doing boner juice commercials. He's fine. Frank won't do it as long as Kenny's still yep. at the home. And he, yeah, that's a history. Who is the hot, who would be a hot commodity on the market this year as a hitting instructor? Is there a slam bam? Like, that's a, that's, that's a real deep market right there. They got to go a deep dive. Call it, <laughs> to replace Rick. Well, that, what if well, he just Rick's gets out ahead of it? Get that's out ahead of it. Promote uh, Vizcael to your hitting coach, and then he is your next manager. No, because I mean, if you're Rick Renteria, don't you take a deep breath too? Though, like, if the Sox were going to fire him, they would have done it now. Oh yeah, he, no, that it let the Rose pattern already said he's coming back. Yeah, yeah he's coming back. Said. He is going to see through them, hopefully winning. So, how do you feel about that, Zip? For now, for now, <laughs> Rick Renteria is the man. I said on our last couple shows, I'm good with it either way at this point. I really am. I think he has a, a bond and a, a build with a lot of these young guys. And, I mean, he was part of the Luis Robert pitch down in Cuba. I mean. He's a good dude, too. Like, yeah, and I think he's, he's just a good dude. It's fine. I would like to see maybe a new bench coach, too, but just to kind of get someone else in his ear. But Todd Stevenson and his assistant both got the boot. Um, you know who didn't? And we'll never. Yeah. Teflon Don. Don Cooper. Don Cooper. <laughs> the man. Cooper. Teflon Don will never go anywhere. I mean, the bullpen wasn't that bad this year. So, I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't the worst problem they had. It doesn't matter. Don Cooper's never going to get blamed for anything. Right. And if, actually, we're going to get shit for even just bringing this up right now. Because people really love Don Cooper. As we learned He's earlier. a made man. He's a he, made man. He really is. He's the he's, most made man. Yeah, he's a made man. He's been around for like, I think it's been like what, Jerry Manuel, Ozzy, Ventura, and now Renteria. That's four managers. Like, when's the last time you've seen like one pitching coach stay through four different Pads. managers? Impressive. Tef, Lon, Don. He is bulletproof. The man will never go anywhere. So, I mean, at this point, it's just, it is what it is. Just got to take it. So, uh, some other just miscellaneous news and notes. Michael Kopik 
made uh, instruction start today. He pitched, I think, one in a three-fourths inning. But the big thing is he was hitting 96 to 100 on the gun. The not, the not good news was from that game was Alec Henson pitched too, and he was hitting 90 to 94. And apparently the control wasn't there, so – that's I mean, that's true. expected, though. They're, these guys are... I mean, even Kopech, I think, the guy who was uh, tracking him down uh, in at Instructs, he was like, yeah, he's, I mean, his command's still rusty. Mm-hmm. He hasn't pitched much. I think he had, like, a couple of bullpen sessions in Chicago in right. September. This was, like, his first game action, so... That that's time. expected. It takes time. Oh, yeah, but I'm just happy it's to see the... Memory. I'm just happy to see the velocity there. And what do you think about that's the new... More, that's delivery? probably the most important part, though, too. You can... The, right. the, the command comes with comfort and obviously i, I th- there is a part of your body that just throwing specific you can go out there and chuck it down the ramming and throw the ball over the backstop but getting that those fine tendons and getting those fine muscles going and getting them accurate that's huge and that takes time that's not overnight that's mr kyle hendrix and you throw 72 <laughs> oh wait that's ben zobrist i'm sorry and then to all those point um his delivery looks different. It looks simplified. It looks just a, a lot little bit less more, motion. Yep. A, a lot less motion, a lot more control, and the arm movement wasn't as violent. And that's what we were looking at today, right? The video that we were talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and that, delivery, that delivery is very quiet. You know, I, it's not illegal per se. I mean, you are supposed to step at least parallel or beyond the, the pitcher's plate. Nobody cares anymore at this point. But that's a with nobody on base. That's one hundred percent okay at that point. I mean, it, 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 he comes set. It's a lot. Le- I mean, really, if you look at his delivery too, there's not a motion backwards. His foot steps back, but his weight stays on his front foot or his, his right foot, excuse me. And so his 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 actual drive foot stays balanced. His weight stays forward. It's just a timing mechanism. Once he comes set and he comes back, and then he gets himself into a good set position. He quiets everything else. That's a way to almost eliminate. All the clutter. Basically, it's basically, it looks like what they're doing is they've eliminated the clutter of his delivery and just simple simplified it down to really just break hands, mm-hmm. break, right. and then go. And it's good. It's- like, even in the video, it's kind of hard to see. So, like, like right. if you're listening, just imagine, like, Arietta or, like, yes. Darvish. It's like that little it's, – it's almost like he's in the stretch. Mm-hmm. And, like, when, like, when a runner's on, where he just takes that, like, small little step. But, you know, it's all it is. And, I mean, whatever – I don't know, like, I don't know if that's just because, like, I mean, because he, I know the story last year was that he, he, he did try to quiet down his delivery more from what it was um, when he was first coming up through the minors, and, like, that was a big thing, how he quieted down, had a lot less going on, and, like, I don't know if, like, this new modified windup is because of the, because of Tommy John, or just the mechanics works for him, or whatever, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting, I guess. It's simplified. Mm-hmm. It's, he's going to throw more strikes. I think. I think that's part. I think if they're quieting things down, you got to quiet a little bit at a time. You can't cl- like quiet everything down at once. And I, honestly, a lot of coaches they like to just go straight out of the stretch. If they want to make it really simple, you just go straight stretch. And right. so when you see a lot of guys, I mean, I I want to say it's Brophy Prep in Arizona. Um, they have a couple guys that are playing in the majors right now, and they actually have you know. And there's a lot of programs that do this at the high school level. They have a program policy where you don't even get to throw out of the windup until you're a senior in high school. And then you get to decide if you want to go. But most of those guys choose to stay out of the stretch. And so the entire pitching staff stretch. And I think that there's the reason they're doing that is they're breaking the pitching delivery down almost to the most basic form so that they can deliver and, and focus more on delivery and, and efficiency. Because even at the high school level, efficiency matters. But they've got freakish kids too. But you move that up right. to a, like a, a solid pitcher and you quiet everything down and you really simplify it for them. Then you got someone that can you know figure it out. Then you can build back out. Once he gets comfortable with that, you can – he can go away with it because everyone likes the delivery, likes likes a wind up. But he can evolve from that once he's figured out how to stay confis- consistent in the zone frequently. Yeah, and again, the velocity was there. So that actually that was the biggest thing that just made me like take a deep breath. Like, whoo, he still got all right because his whole repertoire is built around blowing it past a guy. Like, yep. So. All right. Everybody's been waiting for this. Uh oh. It's very important. Our postseason predictions. Ooh. Nuke, I know you're listening. You're not here, nerd, because you're teaching your class. You should just give everyone a freaking B and come <laughs> do the podcast. But 
whatever. If you're in Nuke's class, we need your Gabe Kapler thoughts. I'm trying. Yeah, <laughs> Nuke predicted the A's to go to the World Series, if you recall, and he was uh, trying to chirp me on Twitter, and then <laughs> they lost to Tampa Bay. So thank he was God. close. They scored a run in the wild card game. <laughs> thank God for that. Uh, the Brewers lost to the Nationals, who are currently trying their hardest to give the Dodgers a one-game lead. No, no, no. They, so. Not only did the Brewers lose to the Nationals. <laughs> Sorry. They it's had... Okay. If they you had, come like, on the show to smoke a racist, you can smoke a racist on this show at any not time. Not only did they lose, they had, like, an old-school Cubs meltdown. Josh yeah. Hader, two out, two outs, one runner on in the eighth, gives up, I mean, it was hilarious, a broken bat single to, like, 58-year-old Ryan Zimmerman. Uh, and then he walks Anthony Rendon, who, sh- who the Cubs should sign. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Juan Soto, who Soto has always come through in the clutch, like, turns on a <laughs> fastball, 1-1, lines, it, lines into right field. And poor Brewers fans who, like, had a full, like, memorial service for Christian Yelich, like, his, like, corpse could have, like, done a better job getting that yep. ball in right field. Just keep K- the ball K- in K- front of you. Kato was pissed. Oh, Kato! Kato. Oh, so you have to do it. We have to do uh, our right. uh, edition of uh, reading Kato, Kato Kalen's oh, tweet. Keep going. <laughs> going <laughs> off on yep. uh, Craig Council and Josh yep. Hader. You keep going. I'll find it. I know I put it in the chat. Go ahead. It didn't hurt to watch the Brewers blow that either. That kind of was, there was some there was some shit talking from the Brewers. <clears throat> it's a little hot right now in Bears Packer country too. So there's like it's almost like they're almost intermingling their funds right now or commingling their funds. So to see Wisconsin suffer a little bit and then and the Packers lost to the. Uh, I know, for like for like Brewers fans who are like oh like classless you guys aren't even in the playoffs so you get they would have been doing the exact same thing. So one game more. so and welcome hilarious. welcome to. The October fourth version of Cato Kalen tweets. <clears throat> for this, and this is just moments after said meltdown that Aldo just broke down. <sighs> I told you, I freaking told you, Hater, you blew it again at Brewers. You suck. <laughs> Pomeranz should have pitched at least a batter or two. Council, you're <laughs> awful. I hate this team. And scene. Thank you very much, Kato. Very strong. Yes. Kato, oh my god. Kato was pissed. We love you, Kato. Still open invite to get weird on this show. It is still great that Kato Kalen is the number one celebrity Brewers fan. <laughs> I mean, is Perfect. he really- we have a Belushi, so I'm good. But anyways... Well, it fits for Kato, too, because, you know, every time there's something important, he's always in the guest house. <laughs> Brewers are the guest house. Yes. All right, so... We have Twin Yankees, Rays, Astros, Cardinals, fucking Braves, Braves blew it, and Nationals, Dodgers. So... Cardinals are up 1-0 on the Braves. The Nationals look like absolute trash right now. They're losing 2-0 to nothing to the Dodgers. They peaked. So, I guess give me your World Series and then your World Series champion. Oh, you can go first, Kevin. I, I think this is the year the Dodgers finally get it. I hate it. I hate it because I'm in Dodger country here in Vegas, and I got to hear about it from these blue turds. And not a really good blue. They're just... <laughs> oh my god like and, and you know what it's good you know what you know going to the world series three years in a row and not getting it done makes you the buffalo bills of baseball so i just they do have they, that team has been just fantastic and cody bellinger he's my mvp i just you, you look at those guys and what they do is fantastic and i, I think that uh, I, I think the astros the pitching staff of the astros you know that's that that's world series for me that repeat world series which is what i think it's going to be astros dodgers is going to be a, a absolutely dynamically different World Series than the last time they played. I think that, that Rums will be at a premium as opposed to like the beer league softball games that they played last time. I think that the Dodgers and the uh, the the Astros are going to go six games, and I think the Dodgers are going to take it in six. I want 
Major League Baseball to have a Rays Nationals World Series. Because, <laughs> Nobody well, wants that. Because no, Rays I'm, fans don't even want that. Because no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> bitter. I'm not bitter at all about how the Cup season ended. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I think it's going to be an old school East Coast West Coast Dodgers Yankees. I think it's going to be fucking fantastic. Dodgers and, Yankees would be a lot of fun, and I, I think I have to go Yankees. That's old school. Somewhere, somebody in MLB marketing and PR just creamed their pants just at the <laughs> thought of a Dodgers Yankee. Before, before World their Series. boner was killed when I said Nationals raise. Right. So you killed the boner <laughs> and then brought the boner back. But Holy, this is the episode of Dick Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so I legit, I would love to see a Houston Atlanta World Series. Ooh, a little I, think, okay. I, think, I think that'd be a lot of fun. I think Atlanta just had their inexperience was showing in the game today with like Acuna trying to pimp that home run that turned out to be a single and so on and so forth. I unfortunately think it's going to be, yeah, I think it's Houston LA again. I mean, it's hard not to. I mean, no, when, when you see when the, I think it was on, it was on Wednesday when like the Astros made the rotation official, it was yeah. like Justin Verlander, game one, Garrett Cole, oh. game two, Zach Greinke, game three. It's like, yeah, right. it's like, all right, all right. sweet, That's super fair. <laughs> and oh, Verlander could very well have been a cub. So uh, still salty, by the way. The one team, though, I feel bad they, for the Twins. You have to watch out for the Twins. But I feel bad for them. Who picked the Twins? Did you pick the Twins? I think you picked the Twins. Who picked the I twins? picked the Twins to win the so, division. Oh, the division. And I was right. What up? But <laughs> they hit so many home runs. And I just I have this weird feeling that MLB, those balls are going to get super juicy for the postseason. I mean, they are. They still are. Right. But that plays into Minnesota. It's just I don't think Minnesota has the pitching. They uh, yeah no they only have Barrios and then yeah nothing behind them and it's gonna be tough that they have to play well it could be tough or it could be to help them out that they have to play that Yankees have home field like that's the thing though like they could so, hit like a whole bunch of home runs but like so like can the Yankees about earlier yeah yeah but like, so can softball the... game yeah All I right. mean okay you know okay Zo Zo <laughs> the Twins had the most home runs in baseball three hundred and seven. In 2019, mm-hmm. the Yankees had 306. So, like, <laughs> I just, I just, like, that's just a terrible matchup for the Twins. I feel bad for them. Because, like, and then they have that losing streak against the Yankees. Yeah. So. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. I don't care. I want to see them <laughs> get fucking swept. <laughs> I, hey, I mean, at least you guys kept the Indians out of the playoffs. That was as, cool. Oh, hell yeah. But as my uh, one of my favorite Michael Jordan memes that are out there when it comes to the Twins, fuck them kids. So, uh, yeah, oh, man. A Yankees-Dodgers World Series would be fun. A lot of personalities. I just, I really like this Braves team. I think they're a lot of fun to watch. I'm really upset with Acuna right now. So, you know who else is upset with this? Was just, this just came out after uh, that game? Carlos Martinez, the uh, Cardinals closer. Yeah. Get that siren ready, the baseball police. Guess who's mad? Oh god. Guess who's mad? Guess who's not respecting the game? Oh no. Like if you're Carlos Martinez, you got to be like, thanks for being an idiot. Like, but yeah. he's so literally the court, as you're saying this though, I'm watching video of Martinez stare down the batter and then do like some low five celebration dance and then scream at the Braves dugout after he just struck out the last batter. So here's, so here's the, the fuck so, am I missing? So here we go from the card. The Cardinals weren't thrilled by how Ronald Acuna jr. Rounded the bases in the ninth inning. Oh, this was on his home run in the ninth inning. Yeah. His 455 foot <laughs> bomb. And then so the Freddie Cardinals? Freeman came up and hit a 460 foot piss missile. All right, so here, here's uh, the Cardinals weren't thrilled by how Ronald Acuna Jr. rounded the bases on his ninth inning home run, enough that Yadier Molina went to oh, the mound. 
Oh, to calm, no, no, to calm Carlos Gross. Martinez down afterwards. Post game. Post game. This is Martinez's quote. I wanted him to respect the game and respect me as a veteran player. Shut the fuck up. Oh, Dude. my God. <laughs> Kev, your thoughts? Uh, I have no thoughts. <laughs> they are the worst. I'm still thinking about Yadi Molina come out there and breastfeeding his pitcher when his pitcher's butt hurt about somebody hitting Jack <laughs> in the playoff game. This is okay. This is when you show the emotion. They won the game. game no seven. One, no one can this even game say. in freaking April. Yeah, like, no one can even say like, oh, this like, this game doesn't matter. Oh, this this actually stuff. matters. This is emotion <laughs> time now. Yes, it's, it's yes. This oh is okay. like, man! As long as you're not like you know like dropping trout. What's the dump bottom of the ninth? Yeah, we're trying to rally a comeback. Hell yes, you go crazy. They hit that's back okay. To back home runs. That's not. That's different than like. Flip it up, you know, throwing a bat 25 feet in April when your team is like one and six. Like, stop. Like, that, there's, this matters. This, this is it. You get five of these right now. And so also, you acting like a, if you gesture it up and that means your team comes back and wins, gesture the hell up. I want everyone to know that the Zoe reverse school of reverse psychology worked again. <laughs> Although, remember before, the show tonight when we we're asking each other what happened to Todd Gurley. Oh. And the Rams are playing the Seahawks right now, and Todd Gurley just ran in two touchdowns. No, oh, there you go. So for all the FanDuel play- players out there and fans yes. football. Yes. So we're very we touch them all here. <laughs> all right. So we have ten minutes left, you two. Ten minutes. Ten. Because I know both of you. And I know where this can go, and I might regret even saying this, but 10 minutes. I'm cutting you off after 10. Oh. But go ahead and say your Joe Madden piece. Oh. Go ahead. Go, get, go ahead, Kev. Ooh, I got to collect my thoughts. Promise myself I wouldn't cry. <sighs> well, here, I'll tell you. Well, before we start that, so would you rather have uh, Joe Madden or Rick Renteria? Yes or no? Joe Madden. Joe Madden. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> Are you, mad at, are you mad that the White Sox aren't trying to get him? No. Uh, he's going wow. to the because he's going to the Angels Twice to help out. Angels is 100 percent He's going to the Angels to help friend of the program, Mike Trout, Mike. finally get his playoff stats up so people can stop using that pointless, pointless <laughs> stat in an argument. Oh, he's all he's all in one in the playoffs. Yeah, he's the greatest baseball player of all time. Shut the fuck up. And, and now that way. And now Joe, oh, he's on one. And uh, so Joe Madden is going to go out to the Angels. He's going to recruit some talent, come out there with them. And yes, oh, on one. Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe, <Jill>, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah, All right. So I've collected my thoughts. And I've, you know, Joe Madden is a king. Um, and not all kings get to stay on the throne. He is um, going to move to a different kingdom. But it was a cordial goodbye. And that's the thing I like most. I think that shows the professionalism of both him and Theo. They probably went out and got drunk. They, one of them probably ended up like in a you know, San Diego chicken outfit. By the time the night was over, they, they probably had a blast together. And, and they just knew that it was over. And sometimes you have relationships when you're with someone. Um, and you know, you, you've been together for a long period of time. And there's a great deal of admiration for each other. But... You know, the romance is gone. And I think with Joe Madden, just like any relationship where the romance is gone, you know, there, there just wasn't that special chemistry anymore. And I think that Theo and Joe decided that it was a good time to part ways. And I think that that, that is what happens. You know, sometimes you're in different points in your life and this the Cubs organization is in a different point. And so by letting Joe go, I think it's time for the Cubs to go find their new soulmate. And whoever that might be, I think that it, there's a high expectation. I think that the pleasure did outweigh the pleasure, the, 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 ple- the pressure outweighed the pleasure for Joe in the last like year or two of his, you know, the world series brings great expectations. And so I think when the relationship turned to being more friendship and less, you know, of a, a special attraction, that special feeling, the butterflies, I guess you would call it, you know, the magic, it was gone and, and it's okay to let Joe go. And so I, 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 I'm sad to see Joe go, but I understand. And I think that Theo doing an 80 minute press conference to explain everything about the Cubs future and, and its past and where it's headed I thought that took a great deal of professionalism. I mean, name one person that's going to sit an hour and a half in front of a, a press corps and, and legitimately answer every question. So 
I think the Cubs are still on the right path, and I think that Theo is definitely still the guy for the job. But seeing Joe go sucks. I can't wait till he goes to the Angels, and I can't wait till he takes Mike Trout to the next level, and the Angels go on to the playoffs, and we'll go. You know, look at that. You know, I'm so proud He's of my ex. One. He's all one. He's all one. But I love our ex, and so not you know, clutch. Gotta, sometimes when your ex gets married, you got to be happy for them. You know, and and you got to shake the dude's hand, and then the Angels are that dude. Um, we'll just find ourselves a, a sweeter, hotter, younger bitch. And we will go ahead and rock to a series ourselves. Yachty yeah. does it in the playoffs. I'd rather have Yachty. Yachty is the goat. Yachty By the way, the there goat. are still there are still Cardinals fans who, not jokingly, will say they will not trade Yachty or Molina for Mike Trout. Yeah, uh, and they said that from the damn Chili's on a Friday night at nine. <laughs> that Theo Epstein, Theo Epstein for said, one, bro. Two this for is one. what Theo Epstein <laughs> said on. Uh, <laughs> hey, you got to find the deals anywhere you can. Um, Chips and salsa. Theo Epstein basically stopped. Theo Epstein was like almost like blamed himself for like firing, not firing, but just like not bringing back Joe Manon. He put all the blame on him, and he's like, he basically said, under any other circumstance, like he'd still be the manager, but we're moving on in a different direction. But this is the only thing that matters when you talk about Joe Manon's legacy for the Cubs. This is what Theo Epstein said at the end Joe Manon's the best manager in Cubs history. He changed the franchise forever. That's, That's Joe Man's legacy. That's all Big Cubs fans should run for. That's it. Big facts. Facts That's only. It. Yes, sir. Those two things. Best manager in franchise history. He changed the franchise forever. That's his legacy. Yep. As you said, Kev, he deserves a statue. He should get one. I mean... For, as you said, Kevin, and you're right. We're spoiled as hell. Before Joe Madden, the Cubs hadn't ever won the division in back-to-back years. They've never made the postseason three years in a row. He did it four years in a row. Made uh, three NLCS series. Like, we're spoiled. And, like, that's the cost of changing, like the UFC said, that's the cost of changing expectations. When you miss the playoffs on a down year and your contract is up, you're gone. And somebody uh, somebody put, imagine, because... The the Cubs rebuild like it it went fast forward from like year one. So 2015, out of nowhere, they win 97 games. They win the wild card game. They beat the Cardinals in the division series. They go to the NLCS. The next year, they win the World Series. And then 2017, they take a step back. They still win the division. They still win a division series. They go to the NLCS again, but they lose the Dodgers. 2018. You have a whole bunch of injuries. They still won 95 games. You lose to the Brewers in game 163. You lose in the wild card game. And then we all saw what happened in 2019. You just missed the playoffs completely. Imagine if this was backwards. Imagine if year one, they win 84 games. They miss the playoffs. Year two, they're a wild card team. They win, they win the wild card game. They win the first series. Then they go to the NLCS. Year three, they win the World Series. Year four, they win the division again. And then, like, year five, they're, like, again, like, a 90-win team. We're, it's a completely different situation. Like, right now we're talking about, like, like hey, Cubs, are, uh, Cubs just won the division, like, two, three years in a row. Joe Madden, like, fucking greatest manager ever, right, guys? Like, it's just, it's just crazy how things work out. Like, if, if you just switch things around and the rebuild doesn't go the way that it did, Joe Madden's still the manager right now. He he has like a new two year contract or whatever it is that so, runs that runs with like all the. Can I just say one thing real quick? As a White Sox fan, I would literally shoot my dog in the foot to have those five <laughs> seasons right now. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, those are the. <laughs> yes. Yes, I agree. I would. Fuck, I'd shoot myself in the foot to have those five seasons. <laughs> White Sox haven't made the playoffs in like thirteen years. <laughs> Come on, eleven. 11. Sire so feels like 84. <laughs> but I would, I would that kill for video, that. That tribute video that the Cubs put out on uh, Thursday, that's like cool. when it really set in. Because like like we all kind of saw it coming, and then like we found out on Sunday. And then right away, we we're just like thinking, like, all right, well, who's going to replace him? And then like the days go on, and then it kind of like hits you. It's like, oh, like remember all those fun times? You, like, you start to think about it. It's like, oh man, remember. Or how fun it was, like his first year, and then they won the World Series. And... You're the Sarah McLaughlin. Start looking at the old, the old picture. Yep. 
<laughs> Look at the, the old pictures. And you're like, oh, dude. Start, oh my Even their Facebook Wait, and like next after thing the, you know, Cub fans have a restraining order uh, from Joe Madden. The, oh, like wait, the Cubs, Cubs start 2020 uh, with the series against the Brewers, and like they're just they're gonna like lose that series, and like immediately after that, after the third game of the of the year, everyone's gonna do that meme of a uh, Wolverine with the picture. Oh yeah, holding the picture. Joe Madden. Oh. It's, it's, like, it's, no, that's gonna happen. <laughs> That and the, Unless uh, it's Ryan Christensen, they'll sweep the Brewers. <laughs> there you go. You heard it here first. So I want to close the show by asking anyone that's made it this far that actually is still listening to the show. If you crying, right? or anyone you know, know anyone that has any connection to Scott Boris, <laughs> we need you to let him know that we will 100% be his Muppets. We will spread trade rumors all we need is his clients to come on the show and we will be more than happy to be like yo i heard that garrett cole got offered eight years 250 billion dollars so someone's got to match it if, what, are to, what are you trying to say though if scott boris wants to leak to us yeah. that the nationals uh that their offer for anthony rendon it was like 200 million dollars deferred over 50 years <laughs> let us know scott will i know a buffer i know it. a buffer i know you do i know a buffer. But I wanna, don't give it away i want to spread that out yeah if someone wants to let us know that the nationals offered rendon a bobby bonilla deal <laughs> we'd be more than happy to be the ones that spread that rumor and that's the thing and as much as, as much as we're joking five. about how much was it like 210 million or Homeboy gets like five million a year. You know, but it was like, but like as much as we're joking about it, like half of that was probably deferred. Yes. <laughs> like that Bryce Harper That's deal. It's like one hundred million dollars deferred until two thousand like seventy. So right. does that mean that the the Nats think they're going to come into some money in like you know thirteen years or something? No, like that? it just means they're cheap as shit. Yeah, it's the worst. We don't, we don't actually want to pay you. And... No, they they're that dude that has the money but still puts shit on layaway. Mm. <laughs> Stuff. No, no, no! The other dude who like buys expensive suits, but like keeps a tag on and then returns them. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is how much can we get a payment plan, bro? You're a billionaire. There's yep. a little, there's a little imperfection right here. I think you could take the price. Oh no. I yeah. I think it's best for the Rendon market if they get swept by the Dodgers, which probably will happen. Yeah, that's a tough matchup. Yeah. yeah, they probably peaked in that that wild card game. Also, y- Yasmani Grandal. I hope he played his last game for the Brewers. Well, there's a huge market uproar on the south side of Chicago, dude. Everywhere, are you kidding me? The Cubs won. But just, Cubs fans are ready to trade Wilson Contreras, and but, I'm not against it. We have. I, say I know, and it's funny because, like, I was like, I wasn't saying it in an argumentative tone whatsoever, but. Everybody's saying all this shit, and I would love Yasmani Grandel, don't get me wrong, but I was like, you guys remember when James McCann made an all-star game, and, like, he was a pretty good catcher? (laughs) Oh, he'd be a great backup. He's a good backup. Would be a great backup, though. I was like, damn, shit, all right, (laughs) fuck. I mean, I was just kind of throwing it out. The guy was just made something out of an absolute – everybody shit on that signing, except for your boy. And (laughs) – yeah, he was just an all-star, but they want to throw him in the backup position so bad. I guess his pitch framing was like shit. Yeah, McCann was like in the bottom of the league, and he was costing pitchers strikes. And Kernel. I got I got educated on James McCann real quick, <laughs> real well, I mean, quick. That's and that's the thing because that that's the biggest uh, criticism of Contreras. And like I, as much as I love Wilson Contreras, I love the. Like the cliche, the fire, the passion. I mean, he's also a great fucking hitter, yep. but he is just terrible at framing. And yes, all that is is just umpires like being bad. But that's just part of a game. That, that's take, part of the game. I'll take and, Contreras on the White Sox just so he never faces Lucas Giolito again. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, Wilson kills the White Sox. Um, yes, I'm well you know, aware. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like Contreras, like it's been. I mean. I know that he had the late transition, like he was a third baseman up until like, 2013 or something. So it's not like he's been a catcher like the entire time that he's been playing baseball. But like that just hasn't gotten better. I think there's like some numbers of like, oh, maybe he found something like in the last couple months, but he's just he's not a good pitch framer. Jesus, 
he he found Jesus. Anyways, um, so there's Grandel rumors. There's rumors about the entire Mets pitching rotation. There's Mookie Betts. There's there's Chris Bryant. It's on the front page of MLB.com. Chris oh, Bryant. Not only Javi that. Baez, Baez rumors. The Chicago Tribune. Chris Bryant probably not coming back, even though nobody said that. Yes. But you know what? You read the tea leaves. He's got two years of control. And if this is, you know, Theo threw a little bit. Hey, Theo did. He kind of threw it down a little bit. Look, if you're not going to sign, why would we not make it at least losing you profitable? I, hey, look, I'm biased, obviously. And I'm, you know, but I love the Cubs too. And so for me, look, if trading Chris to the, to the freaking Padres for a great haul is going to make the Cubs better, I don't, Chris is, doesn't have to apologize for anything. Chris has won a World Series in Chicago. He was the MVP of the Cubs World Series. He made the last out of the damn World Series and the first one in 109 years. He needs not explain himself to a single soul in Chicago. If you don't like him, suck it. But if he gets traded and it's a good haul and it's good for both the Cubs, Chris can go to San Diego. He, fine. I'm fine with that. You know, it, it's just. Fuck it. We'll be the first podcast. Official rumor. Chris Bryant to the Anaheim Angels because he wants to f- play for Joe Madden. I'd Chris say Bryant to straight San up Diego. for Tommy Lestella. He loves San Diego. Tommy Lestella. Tommy Lestella. I mean, the Cubs are going to need a third baseman if they trade Chris Bryant. Well, By the way, all all the all the shit I said during the season about uh, like like just killing people over wanting to trade Chris Bryant, I'm still going to do that. But if they sign <laughs> Anthony Rendon, all right, fine, you can. Trade you Chris have preference. I'll just say don't. Like it still doesn't make any sense. You preference it every I've time been- with. They need to sign Rendon for this to work, but I've read insane trades like, "Oh, yeah, let's trade Chris to to the Rangers, and we'll get Gallo and some I random." Know. What? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, you don't need a Joey Gallo. No. What? No. It's already had like two of. Yeah. People right now are so they're so on tilt because the Cubs oh. didn't win the World Series that they're willing to throw out. They're 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 not they have not processed yet. They need to process the season. In six weeks, if they still feel the same, because again, it takes a while to process. Right now, Cub fans are kind of a little bit cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. They get a little bit, they lose their shit a little bit. They're knee jerk reaction people. So, knee jerk reaction means once 162, 162 is over, then you got about three to seven weeks of, you know, you're going through your stages of grief, and then you start coming back to your senses. Right. And then all of a sudden, you start thinking about how stupid it sounds to trade a guy that's created more runs in the franchise in the last five years than anybody else there's been. You don't worry about the past, though. You worry about the future. So, so if the future's better without him, then do it. So Grandal rumors, Mets rotation, Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez in Boston, Bryant, and now I'm starting to see Javier Baez's name get thrown around. Don't get into it. I'll save it. So we'll, we'll talk the same about thing as Brent. We'll continue this conversation next week. We'll have this type of show next week where we just we're just gonna talk about trade rumors next week. Just what we think is gonna happen. What we want to happen, realistic shit versus shit that we're gonna put out there. Just see what happens. You guys have any hot tips? Send them, send them our way. Yeah, meatball, hit meatball. us up. Hit meatball. us up, meatball. Line is open. I promise I won't tell you to go fuck yourself. Um, I can't guarantee that meatball. Yeah. I wanted to find that kid's uh, Twitter name again. So yeah. Hit him up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so the Angels are fully prepared to offer a very Con- the, Angel, the Angels fired everybody. <laughs> yep, because they're going to bring in Joe Madden and trade their farm it. for Chris Bryant. So Mike Trout goes more than 0-1 oh. in the playoffs. He's 0-1 for one in the playoffs. <laughs> so that's the first rumor. Let's let's hope that catches fire. Hot fire. Well, no. Let's just bring it. Let's just bring it. <laughs> when Joe Madden is hired by the Angels, please credit Pinwheels and Ivy Podcast. Yes, thank you very much. So for Kevin Filler and Aldo Soto, oh, we're fucking ridiculous. I'm Matt Swazzy. We're 0 for 1. We're 0 for 1 on trade rumors. Yanni <laughs> did it better. Uh, I'll see you at Fridays. Uh, this is the Pinwheels and Ivy podcast. Dollar margaritas. We'll see you next week. Two for one. Nachos. <laughs>